Hello and welcome to the Yonatech video series. I'm John Yonan and today we're going to talk about how to configure a single router. So let's see, we'll just take uh, this 2811, drop it on the, on the screen, and let's jump in. It's still booting, this will take uh, just a moment. There we go. We do not want to use the configuration dialog uh, wizard, so we'll just type N, hit enter, and we are now at user exec mode. Okay. So when you first uh, open up a uh, router from Cisco, there is not much configuration going on. Let's, uh, let's get into this device. Let's type enable, enter. Now we are in privileged exec mode, and let's type show run for running config. This is the configuration that is stored in memory uh, when you boot up the router. And we hit enter. And as you can see, it uh, doesn't really have much. It shows the version, uh, shows the host name, um, spanning tree is enabled per VLAN spanning tree, PVST. Uh, it has no uh, IP address established on the two uh, ports that it has, physical ports, fast ethernet 0 slash 0 and fast ethernet 0 slash 1. If you're curious about this 0 slash 0 and 0 slash 1, I'll go into more detail, but essentially this is the slot and this is the port. This is the slot and this is the port, because you can have multiple uh, devices plugged into these, uh, these uh, routers. You see here there's a port available here, there are more, uh, more uh, cards, I should say cards, not ports that can be plugged into here. And in Packet Tracer, you can select any number of these, uh, these cards and drag them and drop them in. Uh, it's, let me just demonstrate that for you really quick. We would turn off the router first. It will not allow you to drag and drop if you have the router turned on. And let's see, we will come down here and we'll take this WIC uh, well, let's do the WIC 2T. All right, drag it and drop it in there. And now we have uh, a description of the WIC 2T down here. Uh, essentially, these are uh, serial interfaces. Um, I don't want to lie to you here. No, these are dual serial. Yeah, these are serial interfaces, dual serial WAN interfaces. And then if you want to get rid of it, as long as the uh, computer's off, you can drag it right back and it's gone. Then we want to, of course, turn it back on because it's going to reboot our router. All right, let's uh, let this thing boot up here. It'll go quickly. Say no. All right, here we are. You may uh, have multiple routers in your environment. So one of the first things you may want to do is to name your router. Uh, you could be working on any number of routers and uh, out of the box, your router is going to be named router. <laughs> so let's rename that, something that's going to be uh, specific to this device. Uh, the way to do that is to go into privileged exec mode, enable, enter. And now that you're in privileged exec mode, you want to go into global configuration mode. We'll just say conf t for short, configure terminal. OK, here it's very simple to change the name of the router. You simply type host name space and then whatever you want to call it. Uh, let's call this one home router one, enter. Now you'll notice this router is called Home Router 1. After you make a change, you may want to save that in case the system, in case the router were to reboot, 
it unless it's been saved, that whatever has been saved into the uh, memory of the device, the running config, it really needs to be saved uh, to flash memory. Okay, the way to do that is to simply type. We'll go back one level. Simply type copy running config dash startup config. Now I'm using the tab key to uh, complete it, but you can just say copy run space start. That will work. Um, hit enter. Destination file name startup dash config. If you want, you can just hit enter here and it will save it to the default. All right. Now that router name is saved permanently, even if the router were to reboot. Okay, and that's important because uh, you make you can make a lot of changes and forget to save it. And if uh, you forget and the system reboots, you will have lost everything that you did. So please don't forget that. Okay, let's move on to some security. You'll notice that when we first uh, booted up this router, uh, we were in user exec mode and all we had to do to get into privileged exec mode was to type enable and hit enter. Well, we really need to password protect the enable uh, uh, level, the privileged exec level. And we do that through the enable password or enable secret uh, commands. Let me demonstrate that. Here we are at the privileged exec level, right? Uh, we need to go into global configuration mode, not Kong, it's conf, <laughs> T. All right, now we're in global configuration mode. Here, uh, we would type in enable password, let's just say Cisco. We're gonna give it the password of Cisco, hit enter. Now, if I were to go back out and I type enable and I hit enter, now it's requiring me to enter a password. And the only password that it will allow me to gain access to the privileged exec mode is the password of Cisco. So I type that in and now I'm into the router. But there's a big problem with this method. And let me show you that. If we were to type show run for running config, and I hit enter, if you scroll down, you see right here, enable password Cisco. Now, if anyone were looking over my shoulder and they knew what they were looking at, they would tell, they would be able to tell that the enable password for this device is the word Cisco. So that's not real secure. So what do you do about that? Well, you encrypt, you encrypt. And what we can do is we can type uh, enable secret, and that's the key, the word secret. And let's type in Cisco again and hit enter. Oh, guess what? We are not in global configuration mode. This is what you're going to see when you screw up, when you make the wrong uh, command in the wrong mode, uh, or you have a typo or something like that. Essentially, I can't make any changes in privileged exec mode. I have to go into global configuration mode. So let's do that. Uh, conf T for configure terminal. And now I will type in enable secret. And I'm gonna type Cisco again. Remember I typed Cisco for the enable password command. Now I'm doing it for the enable secret command. Cisco and hit enter. Oh, it doesn't like this. The enable secret you have chosen is the same as your enable password. So I can't use the same password that's in clear text and one that's encrypted. It just will not work. So 
I have to use enable secret and something else. Let's call this one um, S3CR3T. That's secret with threes in place of E's, okay? S3CR3T. Hit enter. Now, and it took that one. Now let's do this. Let's go back to privileged exec mode and let's type in show run for running config. Hit enter. Look what happened. The enable secret line has created an encrypted password. That is the S3CR3T password that I just put in. Now it still shows this one, but this one gets trumped by this one. So you'll never be able to use this at this level again. So we might, we're going to want to get rid of this though, okay? So let's do that. We will go into configuration terminal or global, con global configuration mode and that line was enable password Cisco. So what do you do if you want to get rid of a line? You type no enable password Cisco. So what you do is you just type the word no in a space in front of the line that you want to get rid of. You hit enter. Oh, <laughs> duh, no. Oh, remember our history? We can go up arrow. And we, let's just take off this Cisco, just no enable password. Hit enter, that'll take it. <laughs> Doesn't care about the word Cisco or whatever password you have entered in there. It just uh, cares about the actual commands, enable password. So you hit no enable password now if we were to go back and type a show run, hit enter, you'll notice enable password and the word Cisco is gone. Okay. All right. Let's do something else here. Uh, sh you know what, we're up to 12 minutes. I'm going to have a second uh, video about securing the line console. Let me just show you what that is right now. Uh, show run And notice here, line console zero, that is our console port that's on the 2811. Line aux zero or auxiliary zero, that's the auxiliary port that's on the router. This one has uh, is in blue, this one is in black. And then there's VTY, line VTY, which stands for virtual terminal, zero space four, that means there can be up to five simultaneous connections to this router. Zero, one, two, three, and four. Um, we'll go into uh, some detail on how to secure these in our next video. For now, uh, we will uh, sign off. And if you have any questions, please post be below. If you have any comments, please post below. Uh, if you would like to, uh, to see anything or if I've missed something, Please mention it. I will try to get back to everyone. Uh, easier said than done, but I will do my best. And um, this is John Yonan. I hope you have a great day.